has met in Summit. They made declarations, pledged fraternal assistance, forged alliances, and then, in good spirits, dispersed. Among them, Meave, queen of the twin realms Lyria and Rivia. Know the name? Hmm? Heard her beauty extolled? <laughs> Justly so. Remarkable she was. Not for her graceful exterior, but for her persistence and courage. Where was I? Ha! Ah. As the queen and her retinue neared her capital, Count Caldwell appeared. In Meave's absence, the Count was to have helped her son, the youthful Prince Willem, run the Twin Kingdoms. Caldwell had clearly ridden hard. Drops of perspiration dangled from his whiskers, his neck red and chafed from a rough, starched stiff. Hail, Your Majesty. Delighted to see you in good health. The summit, it ended fruitfully, I hope? Yes, at its end, letters were exchanged, documents signed, paper. Time will tell of what value. That will suffice as cordialities go, Caldwell. Tell me what's happened, for I sincerely doubt sheer longing prompted you to ride out. Indeed, Your Grace. Another circumstance inspired me to do so. <clears throat> the strays of Sparla, the bandits, I was to attend to during Your Grace's absence. The situation's gotten out of hand, I fear. Steady, Caldwell. Come now. Deep breath. All right. Speak. What has happened? Be precise. As your grace ordained. I set out and was nipping at the bandits' tails for long. We pursued for weeks until scouts returned, having sighted the strays' camp in the forest near Lockeren. We waited for nightfall, to surprise them as they slept. Uh, alas, it proved a ruse. We found the tents empty. Straw-stuffed dummies around the fire. Soon, we learned that as we waited for the sunset, the strays had snuck away, rounded our positions and ridden to Hawksburn. I beg your pardon, my lord. The tax collectors. That is where they station. So the gold? All of it? Uh, it's stolen, Your Grace. But I shall do all in my power to recover it. This I vow. If it be Your Grace's wish. After weeks in the saddle, Your Grace's wishes are modest. A hot bath and a night's sleep in her own bed. Yet, they shall have to wait. I must look personally to this matter. Your force, Coldwell, I will now command. You... Send a herald to Hawksburn. They must prepare for the Queen's arrival. Air the rooms, dust off the porcelain. Make certain they do it. Do you see now, Reynard? I believe I foretold it would be thus. My son wasn't ready in the least to rule an entire country. I confess, Prince Willem has much to learn yet. Hmm, yes. And very little time. Thought it were bandits riding in. Milka, they stretched her over a fire till she told them where she buried her gold. Rather die than tell him she would, but I know where she kept it. Sit tight, sketch it out for you.
Count Caldwell rode at the column's head, scanning its flanks with a wary eye that, despite his advanced age, proved very sharp indeed. Your Majesty! Bandits! There! At the tree line! The Count's footmen, unaccustomed to escorting their queen, sought to shield her with their bodies and assumed a tight formation to do so. They were promptly knocked aside as Meade charged headlong at the bandits, brandishing her blade and bellowing a ferocious cry. Attack! Charge! Your Grace, the men await. You must lead to begin the attack. This is the salt of the earth, they are, Your Grace. They follow you into fire. You need simply say the word. I shall teach you to respect the crown, you dogs! The chase is on! Time I saw you to... <laughs> this chase took tail and run! <laughs> Ever, ever Look out! Seek cover! We are bombarded! Give me a target. Yes! Our victory is assured! Sound the horns! May they sing praises of this triumph for ages! The battle's not yet done. It is better to conserve our strength. Prepare for a strike that will prove decisive. Battle formation! Protect the Queen! My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. I bit the white of an eye from half a league away. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Ow! Abolish to your command. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. I congratulate you on your latest victory, Your Grace. The bandit stood not a chance. <clears throat> Matters seem indeed to have gotten out of hand, to put it mildly. Meave said, arms crossed atop her shining breastplate. They've grown bold. Doubtless after the raid on the manor, the tax collectors. I've not heard of an ambush on the high road afore. Caldwell explained, avoiding his liege's wrathful gaze. Enough, Caldwell. We must put things right. 
Come! The Queen's retinue set out, cavalry in front, infantry and arbalists close behind, and, following in the rear, the bandits, bound in chains. I do adore this prospect. Yes. Lyria, the Pearl of the North, with its hills and dales. Why, its beauty matched only by that of its queen. After three weeks in the saddle, I've my doubts, Count. We shall pitch camp here. Our soldiers need respite. A spell of it they deserve.
bit of respite, Reynard. Uh, yes. But if you've any new orders, Your Grace, I can be ready at any... At ease, Reynard. At ease. Alas. I've come to fear villain might simply not be cut out to be a king, let alone a good one. A harsh judgment, Your Grace. Let's not be hasty. The prince has but sixteen summers to him. And he's thus fully grown. The crown he should be able to bear at his age. Yet I left the land in his care for but a few months, and look what's become of it. Bandits roam and loot unchecked. We might yet learn of mitigating circumstances, events beyond his control. Would that it were so, Reynard. Would that it were so. Elsewise, we must hope Anseus will demonstrate more wit than his brother. Though I see little chance of that, either. Don't you find it wearisome sitting alone? Wouldn't you prefer another's company? Swapping tales with the innkeep, even? Your concern, I most appreciate, Your Grace. But I prefer silence. Has it always been thus with you? Ever a man apart? Quite the contrary, Your Grace. As a youth, I gloried in company, delighted in conversation. So what was it that changed you? That delight nearly cost me my head. But do you truly not know the tale, my lady? How I came to be your departed husband's aid? I don't, but would gladly hear it. I had but twenty winters behind me when I enlisted. Yet I was granted the rank of lieutenant from the start, not by merit, but by birth. The respect of veteran officers, both my peers and seniors, that they could not grant. Nor did I deserve it. To earn that respect became my driving aim, and to seem wise beyond my years, I began spouting off about the King's decisions. This maneuver Reginald botched, that he failed to think through, and yet elsewhere he'd blundered like a schoolboy. Well, a brilliant strategist Reginald was not. They dubbed him the courageous, not the cunning, for good reason, I dare say. It was not long before I was clanking about in shackles. Another officer had reported me. I was charged with Les Majesty. The court-martial took but a quarter of an hour to deliver verdict and sentence. <laughs>